Hello, my name is Kain Tsan Mononye and welcome to this uh, presentation on estimate costs. If you have followed the previous presentation, we discussed the first process in the project cost management area and that is the plan cost management. The second process we are going to discuss in this presentation is estimate costs. Estimate costs according to the PIMBO Guide 5th edition is a process of developing an approximation of the monetary resources needed to complete project activities. The important benefit of this process is that it helps to determine the amount of costs required to complete project work. Cost estimates are actually a prediction and is based on the information known at a particular time. Cost estimates include the identification and consideration of costing alternatives to initiate and complete the project, trade-offs and risks should also be considered, such as uh, make versus buy, buy versus lease and also sharing of resources in order to achieve optimal cost of the project. Cost estimates are generally expressed in units of some currencies. Take note, expressed in units of some currencies, for instance, dollars, euros, naira, etc. Although in some instances, other units of measure, such as staff hours or staff days, are used to facilitate comparison by estimating the effects of currency fluctuations. Cost estimates are generally uh, should be reviewed and refined during the course of the project to, to reflect additional uh, details as it becomes available and assumptions are tested. Okay, so accuracy of the cost estimate will increase as the project progresses through the life cycle. For example, initially at the initiation phase of the project, a project may have a rough order of magnitude estimate ranging from minus 25 to plus 75. Later during the planning, it may uh, have a better estimate and continually until it gets down to a good accuracy level of minus 5 to plus 10%. Alright, let's now look at the ITTOs of estimate costs. Estimate cost has uh, quite a number of uh, inputs, tools and techniques and outputs. I'll, I'll read all these tools and techniques and the inputs and outputs and then we discuss some of them. Inputs are cost management plan, human resource management plan, project schedule, risk register, scope baseline, enterprise environmental factors and organizational process assets. We have tools and techniques like expert judgment, analogous estimating, parametric estimating, three-point estimating, bottom-up estimating, reserve analysis, vendor bid analysis, project management software, cost of quality, group decision making techniques. Then we have outputs, three of them, activity cost estimates, basis of estimates and project document updates. Let's take a look at some of these ITTOs. Cost Management Plan. Remember, Cost Management Plan is the output of the planned cost management process which we discussed in the previous presentation. We also need the Human Resource Management Plan to provide project staffing attributes, personnel rates and related rewards and recognition which are necessary components for developing project cost estimates. We also need the project uh, schedule as well as the scope baseline. Remember the scope baseline is the approved scope statement together with the WBS and the WBS dictionary. We also need some enterprise environmental factors that might affect cost estimates and organizational process assets. Uh, why do we need the risk register? Because the risk register is needed when we are discussing risk response costs. Okay, 
So when you are planning the, the, the risk response, you want to set aside some money to, to handle the risk. Therefore, you need the, the risk register. The risk register is an output of the risk management knowledge area. Precisely, the risk management, the risk register comes out from the identify risk, risks process. Let's now look at some of these tools and techniques. I've listed all of them here. We've discussed some of them in a previous presentation. But we are going to just look at a few additional ones now. Analogous estimating, very, very important, is a technique for estimating the duration of cost of activities or project using historical data from a similar activity or project. Analogous uh, estimating uh, is used to estimate projects' costs when there is limited amount of detailed information about the project. We are actually talking about costs here because we've used analogous estimating during estimate activity duration under the project time management knowledge area. So we're also using anal analogous estimating to estimate uh, uh, activity costs or to do estimate of the costs, activity costs. Analogous estimating, uh, one thing you should know is that it's less costly and less time consuming but it's also less accurate than other techniques. Let's take a look at parametric estimating. Parametric estimating for costs is an estimation technique in which an algorithm is used to calculate costs or duration based on historical data and project parameters. Parametric estimating uses statistical relationship between historical data and other variables, for instance, square footage in construction, to calculate and estimate for activity parameters such as cost, budget, and duration. Activity costs can be quantitatively determined by multiplying the quantity of work to be performed by the labor hours per unit work. Here we are doing this calculation for duration, but we can also do it for cost. If lane of 10 meters of cable takes $5, then lane of 10 me 100 meters of cable will take $50 because you simply multiply. So in parametric uh, estimating, think of calculation from a statistical point of view. I think this is clear enough. And we also have three point estimating. We also discussed this in estimate activity duration in project time management. The accuracy of a a single point activity cost estimate may be improved by considering estimation of uncertainty and risk. These concepts originated with the project program evaluation and review technique PERT and PERT uses three estimates to define an activity an approximate range for activity duration the first one is the most likely uh, we also have optimistic and pessimistic so these are just estimates the one the first one is the most likely one the optimistic uh, estimate is the worst case scenario, the, the best case scenario, and also the worst case scenario pessimistic. So you are making three estimates or three guesses, and you are going to put these three uh, guesses together using a formula. The formula you use depends on two aspects. It can be triangular or beta. To do an estimate using triangular distribution, you use uh, the formula E is equal to O plus M plus P over 3. That gives you the estimate or the estimated cost. For beta distribution, use E plus 4M plus P over 6 and that gives you the cost estimate. So for beta distribution, the calculation takes uh, the most likely guess multiplied by 4 and uses it for the calculation. 
cost estimate based on three points estimates uh, based on three points with an assumed distribution provide an expected duration that clarify the range of uncertainty around expected costs. Remember, we are discussing estimate costs and not duration. So there are some exercises I put up for you. The first one, you are calculating the expected uh, cost. You are calculating the expected cost using the triangular distribution. And the second one, you are calculating the expected cost using Baker distribution. So try to pause the video, pick up a pen and a paper and possibly a calculator and do these two calculations and check if you come up with the answers I got here. Let's move on to another tool and technique used in cost estimating and that is group decision making techniques. Team based approaches such as brainstorming, Delphi, or nominal group techniques are useful for engaging team members to improve estimates, accuracy and commitment to emerging estimates. Take note that brainstorming, Delphi and nominal group techniques are not group decision making techniques. A pinball guide is presented under group decision making techniques but is not said to be part of nominal group decision making techniques. These techniques or these approaches like brainstorming, Delphi and nominal group techniques, they are group creativity techniques. Remember we've discussed group decision making techniques when we discussed collect requirements, right? And that is under the project scope management knowledge area. Remember group decision making techniques are things like unanimity, plur plurality, dictatorship and majority. These are the four group decision making techniques. So don't get it twisted here. By involving a structured group of people who are close to the technical execution of work in the estimating process, additional information is gained and more accurate estimates is obtained. Additionally, when people are involved in the estimation process, their commitment toward meeting the result estimates increases. Another important tool and technique used in estimate costs is cost of quality. Cost of quality includes all costs incurred over the life of the product by investing in preventing non-conformance to requirements, appraising the product or service for conformance to requirements, and failing to meet requirements and that means your work. Failure costs are often categorized by internal and external uh, costs. So we've mentioned before that failure costs can also be costs or can also be part of cost of quality and failure costs have another name, cost of non-conformance. Okay, that's it or cost of poor quality. I want you to spend some time on the screen. Try to understand the difference between the cost of conformance and cost of non-conformance. For instance, cost of conformance we have prevention costs and appraisal costs. These costs, for instance prevention costs, are applied to building a quality product for instance, training, document processes, equipment and time to do it right, appraisal costs, testing, destructive testing and so on. And we have cost of non-conformance. So try to understand, you spend some money to prevent things from going wrong. And spending some money to correct something that have gone wrong. Which is better? Cost of conformance is simple. So, we want to encourage cost of conformance. You spend a lesser money preventing than correcting. This is about cost of quality. We also have another important tool and technique in estimate course and that is reserve analysis. Duration estimates may include contingency reserves, sometimes referred to as time reserves or buffers. 
these reserves are uh, placed in the project uh, uh, estimate to account for for cost uncertainty. Contingency reserves are estimated costs within the cost baseline, which is allocated for identified risks that are accepted for which contingent or mitigation responses are developed. Contingency reserves are associated with known unknowns. Known unknowns refers to risks that have been identified and it expected perhaps to occur and plans have been made to handle it. They are known unknowns. However, management reserves are specified amount for of the project cost withheld for management control purposes and are reserved for unforeseen work that is within the scope of the project. Management reserves are intended to address unknown unknowns that can affect a project. Management reserve is not included in the cost baseline but is part of the overall project cost requirement. Take note that in my write-up I'm replacing duration with cost because the write-up was made uh, when I was considering uh, uh, the time management knowledge area when I'm considering schedule. So please do take some time to replace uh, duration either place every rate or cost replace with, with costs. Alright, let's move into the outputs of estimate costs. The outputs are three of them activity cost estimates Activity cost estimates are quantitative assessments of the likely amount that is required to complete an activity. They may include some indication of the range of possible results. We also need basis of estimates. Uh, basis of estimates are amount of additional details or supporting details that may support the cost estimates. This basis of estimate might include uh, assumption made, known constraints, indication of the range of possible estimates, indication of uh, confidence level of the final estimate. So all these are supporting details. And then we have another output, project document updates. Well, this is where we wrap it up in estimate costs uh, process under the cost management knowledge area. I'll take back the screen to the ITTOs of estimate costs. So you spend some time uh, looking into the ITTOs and trying to get used to it. And it will actually help you in your exams or for your personal development or for real project management work you might be engaging in. I'd like to thank you for viewing and I hope you've learned from this presentation. And please join me in my next presentation as I'll discuss the next process in the project time management knowledge area and that is determine budget.